Hello, this is Hildron101010 from the Computer Clan on thecomputerclan.com. And by popular request, I have been asked to do a motion tutorial. I've also been asked to do some Final Cut Pro 10 stuff, but I don't think I can do that too well with uh, screen recording going on at the same time. I will run some tests, but my computer is just a little bit too slow to kind of do that kind of stuff. But it actually might not be. I'll have to test that later. I'm getting a new machine soon, so that will be good. But I'll be starting with a Motion 5 tutorial. Motion 5 was recently released from Apple, and it's a pretty good release. It's 64-bit. It's really fast. It's got a new interface and nice features. And uh, since its price point is much lower, a lot more people have been using it, and a lot of people have been asking me questions about it. So I'm going to do a basic tutorial on that. First step is open up Motion. I'm pretty sure you can all figure that out. And this window shows you the type of project you would like to start. It also shows you your recent projects and your own effects and stuff that you have built, saved into here. As you can see, I have some of my own custom stuff in here. So what we're going to do is go to blank. You can choose a template if you want, but for this, I'll just do a blank. And you can choose a Final Cut generator, which is basically a set of graphics you can save and edit in Final Cut Pro 10 without having to reopen it in motion. Basically the same thing with text. You can save an effect and use it in Final Cut Pro and change the text without opening it back up in motion. And same with other effects and transitions. But you can also just export normal movie files with a transparent background. So we're just going to do a blank motion project. We're going to set the, the quality preset to broadcast HD 720, which is a, a 1280 by 720 resolution. And we'll set it to 30 frames per second. And since we're just doing a small, maybe an intro video, we'll just set it to 120 frames, which is uh, 4 seconds of animation. And if you change it to time code, you can also change the seconds, but I like working with frames. So we will do about 120 frames. Alright, so then you press open, and it will open the motion canvas, or actually the canvas and everything else. So I'm just going to maximize this. Okay. So here on the side, we have a pane that comes with three tabs. File browser, so you can browse media on your computer. A library, so you can browse media that is pre-installed with Motion. I believe it comes with 1,900 items, maybe more. And the inspector, which comes with sub-tabs to change settings. So what we're going to do is, like I said, build a basic intro. So we'll maybe do some text, maybe a, a brush. Brushes are cool. So for the canvas, I'm just going to set my size to about 50% just so we can have some extra space to maybe work in here. And I can see the timeline a little bit better just by dragging this up, dragging this over. So I'll make the canvas a little bit small so we can really focus on the timeline here. And these three controls down here tell you what type of timeline view you have. So if I click this, we have no timeline. But if I click it, we see video. If I click this, we have audio. If I click this, we have animation. So we can have all three of these together at once. In addition, you can click these to hide them again, just like what I did now. So we'll start with adding a brush. We will click this brush tool right here. It's obviously the button that looks like a brush. And then you can draw on your canvas. So for example, I'm just going to draw kind of like an S shape sort of thing. So you just click and drag your shape. And there we have it. There is our brush. And that's what it looks like so far. Now you can change all these settings in the inspector, but what's really cool about motion is it has a nice heads up display which puts the main settings into one floating window. So you press this button for the heads up display and you can change your settings quickly through here. Okay so in this HUD I'm gonna choose the effect that I want to work with on, in the timeline then I'll go to shape style and you can preview your shape styles right in here as you can see you get nice pictures of what they look like. I like working with the light effects so I chose the effect in the timeline, have the HUD open, and I went to the shape style menu, went to light, and chose my effect that I wanted. So now this effect is applied, and when we move the cursor, excuse me, the playhead, the canvas shows you feedback of what's going on there. Depending on the speed of your system, you, you might not be able to get real-time results, but when you play back, you get a frame rate counter up here telling you how many frames per second you're getting to know how slow it's going. This is going obviously slower than normal because I'm screen recording. But typically on my system I get near real time results. Okay, so we got that effect made. Now we're going to do another simple thing to lay on top of it, which is some text. So the quick way of doing that is selecting the text, text item right here in the toolbar, or you can press T. And then 
click your cursor in the canvas and type. You now have your text showing up in there. And what you can do is select this text and inside the inspector you can click the text tab and the format button right here will show you a bunch of options. You can use a bunch of presets or use presets you made yourself. And these presets also cross over with Final Cut Pro 10. If you save a preset in Final Cut Pro 10, it will save over into motion. So I'm going to select neon. So we got this uh, neon effect right here. And I'm going to set the font to a neon font that I have. I'm not, I don't really remember what the name of it was. It would probably fit this if I, it would be better if I remembered it. Ah, uh, yes, here it is. So we have this neon set and we applied our own custom font. Now we will use the size tool here and increase the size. So we have this hello world thing and for some reason I put a W on the end of hello so we can go back in there by double clicking it and we can change this like that. And then when you have you can uh, excuse me select the arrow tool right here just to get out of the text mode and you can drag this anywhere in the canvas and you can see you get alignment guides to know when it's centered so let's say I want it right there so now we have our hello world font and our light effect in the back now we might want the text to do something interesting this is when the behaviors come in to be useful you can select the hello world text in the timeline or click it in the canvas you go to this gear here which is add a behavior as you can see the tooltip tells you that and you get just a gazillion options of what you want to do. So we're going to do a basic motion and we're going to do a fade in slash fade out. So what it does is it automatically keyframes a fade in and it automatically keyframes a fade out. So now we have a fade in with this light effect in the background here and it displays this text and then the light goes away and the text fades out. Here's another important thing to know if you're using this stuff in Final Cut. When you go to File and choose Publish Template, you can actually save this as a template to use as a Final Cut generator. So just make sure inside Properties in the inspector here for your text, go, uh, excuse me, text, you actually want to select text, not properties, you, you make sure this checkbox that says Edible and FCP. This will mean you can change the text in Final Cut Pro 10 without having to reopen the motion project. So that is our basic intro. We can go into 3D cameras and lights and a million other things, but I'll probably save that for another tutorial as this is supposed to be a basic thing. You can do a lot with this program. So now that you have your intro, you obviously want to do something with it, basically export it as a movie to use in your videos. So in the share menu, you get a, quite a few options and you can also use, I think, Compressor, the Compressor application with this, if you want more settings, or to send the process to another computer, but that's another advanced thing. But you get all of these settings here, but what I'm going to do is just use the Export Movie command. You can press that from the Share menu or press Command-E. Then once that loads, you get this panel here, and you get a preview area here, and you get all of your options, but just the default settings will do because I believe it uses Apple's uh, ProRes codec, yes, ProRes 444, four, and it shows you the resolution and the frame rate. And you can also have it open up in a program when you're done. So hit Next, and then you can choose the location and the name of the file that you want, and when it's done, it'll open up in the program you set it to, and that's your movie. So that is a brief, a super brief introduction to motion I will probably do some more advanced things in the future, maybe with cameras and particle emitters and stuff, because there's a lot of great stuff in here. Just just go into the library and take a look at some of the stuff that's in here. Just explore with some of the things that you can do, because there are a lot of objects in here. There's a lot of customizable settings. So just explore with the stuff and see what you can do. Maybe self-teach yourself some and find some other tutorials. So I'll definitely be doing some more. Stay tuned for some more tutorials on Motion 5, and it's only a $49 program from the Mac App Store. You don't need Final Cut Pro 10, really. It is better to have that because of the new integration, but if you can't afford it and you're still using Final Cut Express, or even iMovie for that, you can still get Motion for 50 bucks and use your effects that you make. That's all for this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one.